How's it going YouTube? Sick Eric back again with another video. Today we're going to be doing a spec comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition and the OnePlus 8T. Two very very good devices. Similarly priced, uh, the Samsung can be gotten for a little bit cheaper nowadays. Uh, the OnePlus is still about, I think it was uh, $750 if I'm not mistaken. Both of these are the T-Mobile variants of each of these phones. You can get these unlocked, of course, from OnePlus and straight from Samsung. But these are going to be the T-Mobile variants of these phones. Two really, really good phones. Uh, no complaints on either one of these. Honestly, they are both really, really nice. Uh, we're just going to be going over the specs of both of these. And that way you guys could determine for yourselves which one you would might want to consider picking up. So let's go ahead and jump down into it. So both of these have a 6.5 inch uh, display. The Samsung has a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED display with a refresh rate of 120. Uh, resolution is 1080 by 24 100 with 407 pixels per inch you do get an 84.8 screen to body ratio over here on the samsung uh, you do have an always on display as well for this display uh, it does support hdr 10 and so does the oneplus going on over to the oneplus you get a 6.55 inch fluid amoled display again with 120 hertz refresh rate so that is one comparison between the two that they do have and they do share hdr 10 plus compliant 1080 by 2400 and 402 pixels per inch so very similarly spec uh, screens on both of these and as far as recently you do have an always on display on the oneplus as well of course the samsung's is going to be a bit more customizable uh, than the OnePlus. The OnePlus, you can only choose from different clocks. You can't really change the colors. Samsung, so you got a whole bunch of different clocks you could choose from, and you can't change the colors and things like that. So, Samsung definitely has the better always on display over the OnePlus, but this is the first time OnePlus has done it. So, hopefully, they include more features in that department. As far as size wise, the Samsung Galaxy. FE, we're just going to be calling it the FE, it has a uh, total size of 6.29 inches tall uh, and it is 2.93 inches wide and 0.33 inches thick. Going on over to the OnePlus is 6.33 inches tall, 2.92 inches wide and 0.33 inches thick. So very just really really exactly pretty much almost exactly the same size on both of these devices they are really really similar and they even look the same on the back so that is crazy but they are two really really perfectly sized uh, devices they fit excellent in the hands you can reach on over to the sides and get to the top pretty easily on both of these and they both do have you know stock launchers on there right now and you do have the option to swipe down for your notification down in the middle if you need to do that as well two different types of launchers on each of these you got the one plus which has a very stock launcher and of course samsung with their you know sideways scrolling which i really don't like but the launcher has gotten a lot better and you do have double tap over here on the oneplus samsung does not have double tap but i did install one-handed operation that way i could lock it like that but they do both of these do have double tap to wake on them so that's really nice to have that on both of them as far as weight goes, the Samsung comes in at 6.70 inches or 6.70 ounces, not inches. And uh, the OnePlus comes in at about 6.63 ounces. So it's the OnePlus is a bit lighter, surprisingly, uh, since it does have a glass back and the Samsung does have a plastic back. Uh, the OnePlus seems to be a bit lighter 
than the Samsung, which is crazy. They both feel about the same to me on um, both of these. But yeah, really, really excellently built devices. I'd probably have to give the win to the OnePlus as far as build quality, just because it's got that glass back and it's just... All right, so going on, on over to the platform, both of these, so actually the Samsung only has Android 10 out of the box with one UI, 2.5, out of the box, you know, running Samsung's nice little UI system, which has improved over the years. While over here on the OnePlus, you get Android 11 with Oxygen OS 11, which does similarly reflect and does look like Samsung a bit with their new UI, which I do not mind. Uh, they did stray away from the uh, stock Android feel, but it is really, really fast and fluid. And I think the OnePlus is a bit faster and smoother than the Samsung, even though they both have that 120 hertz refresh rate. The OnePlus just seems a lot more snappier than the Samsung does. But uh, that's just my opinion. Samsung has improved and they are both very similar in the software department as far as the way they look and it, you know everything feels, everything is at the bottom whenever you're trying to do stuff in all your menus and tabs and things like that. Going on over to uh, the processor, both of these have the Snapdragon 865 processor. The Samsung has the Adreno 650 GPU, while the uh, OnePlus also has a 650 GPU. The OnePlus takes the lead though with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of internal storage. So uh, very, very nice for the OnePlus. The Samsung only has six, gig six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. But the, the plus side over here in the Samsung is you can expand it via micro SD card up top. So that is really, really nice. They both have UFS 3.1 storage, which means things are gonna be fast when you're trying to you know, upload stuff to your computer and things like that and saving photos and, and everything like that. So really, really nicely specced. Both the same processor, 7, uh, 865 Snapdragon on both of these, so that's really, really nice. For the price, you get a lot of bang for your buck for both of these. No issues with lagging or anything like that with any of these phones. They are both very, very smooth in, in the uh, performance department. The uh, Like I said, the lead, we're probably going over to the OnePlus just because it has that 12 gigabytes of RAM. And uh, the, but the Samsung is no slouch, you could do a lot with these phones editing videos and rendering videos and whatever. Everything runs smoothly on both of these, but like I said, the OnePlus seems to be a lot faster and smoother than the Samsung S20 FE. So, going on over to the camera side, uh, on the Samsung, you do get triple cameras on the back, you get a 12 megapixel main sensor, you do get a 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor, and an 8 megapixel telephoto sensor. On the back, on the front side, you get a 32 megapixel uh, camera, which these cameras are really, really nice. On the Samsung, I've said it before, they really knocked it out of the park with these cameras. You're gonna be seeing some camera samples uh, flash on your screen comparing these two, just a couple of photos, nothing serious. Just to show you guys the difference between these two cameras. Over here on the OnePlus, you get a 48 megapixel main sensor, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, and then the other two cameras is where they kind of lost me. They have a five megapixel macro sensor and a two megapixel depth sensor, which is kind of pointless for the macro. I would have preferred a telephoto than the uh, macro or anything like that. I could understand the depth sensor maybe, but why they didn't include a telephoto, I do not know. Front facing camera is a 16 megapixel front facing camera on the OnePlus. Now all the specs sound every, you know, nicely and everything, but the uh, Samsung probably takes better photos than the OnePlus by far. Um, hands down, the Samsung definitely takes better photos than the one. Like I said, going on over, you're gonna be seeing some pictures flash on your screen. As far as camera quality goes for both of these devices, the Samsung definitely knocks it out of the park. OnePlus definitely is not a slouch though. They have gotten better with their cameras. Uh, but like I said, Samsung just has the most versatile 
camera on board having those three different focal lengths, a main, a ultra wide, and a telephoto, while over here on the OnePlus, you pretty much just have a main and a ultra wide, and that's it. Samsung over here can record up to 4K 60 frames per second on both the front and on the back, which is really, really nice. While over here on the OnePlus, you get 4K up to 60 on the rear, but only 1080p 30 on the front, which I never really understood why OnePlus did that. This phone is capable, it has a capable processor. Maybe the sensor is not capable of 4K, but I honestly do not believe that. I think that they just, you know, handicapped this phone to do 1080p only, which is kind of dumb. They should have did 4K on the front and on the rear on both of them, just like the Samsung. So as far as cameras go, Samsung probably takes a lead here as far as uh, image quality and video recording capabilities. But the OnePlus is not that far behind other than that 1080p uh, cap on the front facing camera sound on both of these they both have stereo speakers you get a grill at the bottom and then you have the uh, earpiece acting as a secondary speaker up top they both sound really really nice they both have dolby uh, on here so really really cool stuff for both of these As far as which one sounds the best, it's totally up to you. I think they both sound pretty equally loud and good. But uh, like I said, it depends on what you guys think. But I did a uh, sound comparison, I think, on both of these. I'll try to find that and post a link if I can. But they both over offer Adobe Atmos, auto, dynamic, you know, movie, music. They're both very customizable. Samsung over here, you can adjust it with a uh, equalizer as well while over here on the oneplus you can only do that i believe if you have earphones connected or bluetooth connected on there as well but they both offer really sound really nice sound on both of these uh really really excellent sounding i might play a clip uh just to show you guys uh the difference of sound between both of these but they're both really really good honestly you can't tell the difference they're both loud and crisp and sometimes you may not even need to use a bluetooth speaker with either one of these just because they're so loud going on over to the battery well actually another thing i forgot to mention was both of these have no headphone jack unfortunately uh so that is sad the uh samsung a71 i think had a headphone jack but yeah, most phones nowadays, they are not coming with headphone jacks. You will not find a headphone jack on either one of these. Going on over to the battery, uh, both of these have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, which is really, really nice. Over here on the Samsung, you get 25 watt fast charging with 15 watt wireless charging and about five watt reverse wireless charging, which means you can set a watch or some earbuds on the back and reverse wirelessly charge using the Samsung Galaxy uh, S20 FE. So that is definitely a win over here. While over here on the OnePlus, you do get a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, but the kicker is over here, you get 65 watt warp charging, which is insane. Uh, so as far as charging speeds go, the OnePlus definitely kicks the Samsung's butt. As far as speed goes, but 
over here you do not have any sort of wireless charging which is sad uh, so as far as that goes if you like wireless charging and you know the first wireless reverse wireless charging the samsung has it uh, but then if you like you know really fast charging speeds the oneplus definitely kicks its butt with that 65 watt warp charge so keep that in mind on both of these but either way battery life on both of these is pretty strong you can easily get a full day of battery life using both of these using that a pretty moderate use out of both of them and uh, you'll be able to get through a full day on either one no problems no issues there and that's having the fullest resolution over here uh, at 120 hertz always on does not really do anything the always on displays i've noticed don't really do much uh, as far as battery drainage goes either so that's really really nice keep that in mind for both of these but yeah 4500 milliamp hour batteries on both of these all right so yeah some of the standout features on either one of these the samsung and on the oneplus well the samsung actually you only get bluetooth 5.0 on the Samsung, you do get an optical in display fingerprint sensor on both of these, which is really, really nice. Over here on the uh, OnePlus, you get Bluetooth 5.1, uh, which is a little bit nearer and quicker. Both of these, like I said, offer in display fingerprint sensors on them. Uh, the OnePlus is probably a little bit more faster and reliable than the Samsung, but uh, they're both really good. They're both optical so they're both really really fast as far as the samsung goes it's definitely faster than the uh biometric that you get on the flagship phones which is the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor it's definitely faster than uh those so that's a plus on this phone right here because they're both optical they may not be as secure but they're both really really fast both of these phones have 120 hertz refresh rate which is really nice the oneplus definitely does feel faster to me as far as scrolling goes and performance just because it has that extra uh, six gigabytes of ram over here on the samsung you do get that uh, micro sd card which definitely helps when you're trying to expand your storage take pictures and things like that while over here on the oneplus you do not have micro sd card support um, over here on the oneplus you do get decent cameras but you also have that useless macro sensor and uh, it really does not do much for it and they should have included a telephoto instead of a macro honestly that would have made this camera a little bit more versatile and more like the samsung's but like i said the samsung definitely has a more versatile camera and takes better pictures than the oneplus does uh, as far as you know battery stuff goes the oneplus definitely wins as far as faster charging uh, it is faster than the Samsung, but the Samsung does offer wireless charging and reverse wireless charging if you guys want to uh, keep that in mind. As far as everything goes, I think they're both equally matched as far as, you know, specs and everything. They both have the same Snapdragon 865 processor. Uh, the OnePlus definitely has a better build on here. They're both IP68 water and dust resistance. Well, at least the... Uh, t-mobile version of the oneplus 8 is samsung is ip68 water and dust resistance or about the same there more premium build over here on the oneplus then on the samsung but then again the samsung is a bit more durable with that plastic back so keep that in mind a lot of people might not like it but in my case i just put a skin on it and you're gonna have this in a case anyway so you really won't tell the difference uh, holding both of these they both feel nice and premium in the hands as far as colors go, the Samsung offers a wide variety of colors. You get the Cloud Mint version, which is this color, you just can't see it. A Cloud Lavender, Cloud Navy, Cloud White, Red, and Orange. So you get a lot more to choose from over here on the Samsung. While over here on the OnePlus, you only get two different colors, Aquamarine Green and Lunar Silver. This right here being the Lunar Silver color. So really, really nice phones. Uh, no complaints here. These have been two of my favorite phones of the year, I think. Uh, the Samsung definitely knocked it out of the park with the FD series. This phone is definitely a bargain. You could probably pick this one up for like maybe anywhere between $550 to $700. They're probably having some sales right now. While over here on the OnePlus, 
Uh, it does run about 750 on T-Mobile, so the better deal will probably be on the Samsung over than the OnePlus. But uh, maybe the OnePlus will have some deals soon to where you can get a little bit cheaper, but they're both roughly around the same price. I don't know how long the 550 price for the Samsung is going to last. Normal price, I believe, was $600, or I think it was $699, if I'm not mistaken, for the Samsung. So OnePlus is, what, $750? anywhere between 700 and 750 so very equally matched as far as price goes uh, for me personally i really like the one plus there's things that i like about each of these phones i wish the camera system on the samsung was on the one plus because then that will just make this phone really really perfect and of course i wish the one plus had wireless charging while over here on the samsung you do have excellent cameras wireless charging reverse wireless charging and just the overall package is over here on the Samsung, but the OnePlus definitely catches my eye with this design and this color and the premium build quality. So for me, it's a toss up as far as which one I think is better. I think they're both equally matched. They both have their strong suits and their weaknesses, but really, really excellent phones, especially for the money. Phones are getting really good at a lower price point nowadays. You do not have to go out and spend twelve hundred dollars on a phone just pick up a nice decently priced phone and you will be disappointed so with that being said guys hope you enjoyed this video comparing the oneplus 8t and the samsung galaxy s20 fb two excellent devices and don't forget to subscribe hit that little notification bell for future notifications on this channel and uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or a thumbs down if you didn't that is quite all right i will not judge you guys and like i said subscribe hit that little notification bell for future notifications on this channel you guys stay safe out there happy holidays hope you had a great thanksgiving and hope you guys have a great christmas and i will see you guys in the next one peace